because of Ethan, because he's, in my opinion, an actual crappy person, I get why people complain about him now. He just was being really unnecessarily mean to me. So Nathan Barnett, two-time Creator Class champion and YouTuber who goes under the alias of Dad, went on stream a couple nights ago to talk about how he no longer likes Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast. Now, for those of you who don't know, Nathan recently won a boxing match against an employee of Ethan Klein's show, the H3 podcast, who goes by AB and Starkiller Online. But despite winning this boxing match, Nathan expressed how he actually felt like he lost because AB gained more Twitch viewers from the fight than he did. Here is what he said on his stream. When you finished Creator Clash 1, I know Mizkiff raided you, but even before that you were getting huge amounts of viewers. Probably about a thousand. And that's what AB's getting yeah, now. On the Starkiller channel, 200. there was 1,200 people watching him. I saw it. 1.2 thousand last night because of the, he did the post create a clash thing he was streaming practically immediately after he was also you know. streaming during all his training and he wasn't boxing oh i know he streamed know. all the time and that's i think why he lost the fight because he was throwing sloppy punches i'm no joke i could have taken his punches all night they were so not I did say, and I'm not lying, they were the hardest punches I've ever felt because when you're in sparring, your partners purposely don't go super hard because they're protecting you. So you're training. You don't want to get knocked out before your fight. So AB's punches were the hardest I experienced. But I, after he punched me, I was like, oh, this is nothing. I can take these all night. That's why I took them and just worked on his body. But I think he would have punched harder if his form was better, because he was throwing straight up windmills, if he had trained, he streamed. We saw him. He streamed every day. He did a 48-hour stream two weeks before the fight when I was, like, in the thick of it. I think that's why he didn't do as good, because he would put more effort into streaming this year leading up to the fight than he did training. We don't know, do we, anything about what he did or went No, through. I don't know. I don't. He never told or, me what he uh, actually did training-wise, but, like, Based on his streaming schedule, and he was live all the time immediately after he'd get home from H3, there was no time for him to be training. He did not train twice a day every single day like I did. He did pretty well out of Creator Clash, didn't he, really? Yeah, he got a ton of new viewers. Yeah. He's got crazy subs. So it all worked out for him. I won, but I still have no viewers. <laughs> AB worked the streaming system throughout his boxing camp. I just couldn't believe he, every night he was live. I couldn't believe it. I was like, why is he streaming? Shouldn't he be sleeping or training? I had 1,500 when I was playing Uncharted at one point last year after yeah. Creator Clash. And then I went on Game Grumps Tour and I came back and I had 20 viewers. <laughs> because, because... The problem with Twitch is this consistency thing is that you cannot stop. I and mean, it's what AB understood. He used create a class. That's why he didn't get, train and he streamed all all training season to keep his views him, they up. Were interested in the boxing. Yeah, you he's know, a better obviously. businessman than, than me, but I'm a, I guess, better athlete than him. Well, exactly. Which doesn't, but, doesn't know, even he, matter because he cares. realized that he was on a roll. He had to stream. He did so. His audience maintained. And I feel like he won in some ways because, yeah. you know, because Clash now he's rich him. and I'm not. Yeah. I mean, it's also just the way the actual, the full actual H3 crew rea reacted. They were like incredibly mean to me for yeah. no reason. Even after the fight, when I was saying nice things about them, they were just ignorantly rude and horrible just because i won and it was like all right this is this is how you really are okay you weren't like this the hundar they didn't act like that the hundar they never invited me on the show ethan just kept always saying oh we gotta get dad to call in hundar was invited on the show to chat and hang out i wasn't i was only said call in so that they could do damage control because they were so mean to me they had to be nice to me after and I was never offered to even go on the show into the studio. So it's like, all right, dude, you're just trying to cover yourself. And you were like super mean to me this year for some reason. And you weren't ever like that to Hundar. The whole year last year, they were not that mean to Hundar at all. Like he, they weren't even like making jokes about me. They were just being, they were saying F you. And they're just saying straight up insults with no joke at all. Why am I even like associating with these people that are just like so uncreative and so 
just randomly negatively mean to me. It was stupid. I was like, this is dumb. I'm not involved with any of this anymore. I'm, I'm over it. So that's how I feel right now. I'm kind of like, yep, I won. I won fair. And whatever crap they said, I don't even care about moving on. Ethan ruined the bit from the beginning. There was supposed to be a chair bit that he straight up purposefully ruined. There was a, a bit that they approved. They talked about behind the scenes when I brought, when I was going to do the chair bit and Ethan decided to completely change the bit and not talk to me or anyone about it. And then I got forced into doing this weird chair bit he started, which started the whole relationship with me and them off on the wrong foot. And I couldn't say anything about it because it was, I was just trying to go along with whatever was happening. But Ethan, in my opinion, with that, we had, as it was still too early. It was no, no one knew so, I was like, fighting him. Knew. It was nine yeah. months before it was ever going to be announced that that AB and I were fighting. And he just started being yeah. randomly rude to me. And people were like, wait, why are you being mean to dad? I thought dad was a friend of the show. Because of Ethan, because he's, in my opinion, an actual crappy person. And I used to like him. I used to defend him. And I was like, all right. I get why people complain about him now. He just was being really unnecessarily mean to me because he thought it was a funny bit, but yet no one knew why. And the bit for the chair was a completely different thing. It was a nice gesture for me to the joke was dad was trying to be nice because eight mega 64 was mean to them. It was mean to Ethan. I'm trying to send a funny, innocent, kind gesture sending this chair he twisted it to, to make it so that he could start hating on me and it made no sense it was the dumbest bit ever because there was no reason for us to be feuding and that was the beginning of a disastrous back and forth between me and h3 as a person who prides themselves on storytelling and feuds and wwe style beefs that's like what i do i've done it with wwe professionally with Dolph Ziggler, Ethan is just kind of an idiot and makes himself only look good and does not make other people look good because he can't take any insults ever. So H3, mm -hmm. whatever, dude. I know the audience is nice, but Ethan is pretty stupid in my opinion. And no one ever tells him that because he's the boss and they have to just make everything better for him and let him say stupid things and then just act like he didn't do anything dumb when he's actually pretty needs to take responsibility for his actions every once in a while so that's some of what dad said on his twitch stream about ethan he did say more but it isn't relevant for this video in particular if you want to see the full thing i'm gonna link the twitch vod in the description below as well as the full versions to whatever else i clip in this video like for example the response h3 gave on his latest podcast off the rails number 69 here is what he said i so don't want to do this but i feel that it's getting to the point where I have to. I've tried my best to avoid having to talk about this, and I'm not kidding. If I have to talk about this, Dad is gonna look like a fucking idiot. Dad has been popping off about me and AB for no damn reason, and I don't understand what is wrong with this guy. It hurt because, you know, I consider Dad to be a close friend. I still do. Sarah, this was very surprising to see. I literally just put out a video prior to seeing these clips saying nothing but good things about Dad. I think he would have punched harder if his form was better because he was throwing straight up windmills. First of all, you won. Yeah, that's it. You he, you won, <laughs> bro. Won. You yeah. got the dub. You're mm -hmm. going to come out and like shit on your opponent who, by the way, trained super hard. And by the way, dude, as tough as you want to act, your ass was scared as shit. People who are saying this is a bit. I messaged him myself yesterday, responded to me saying same thing and saying that he's just it came from a place of him being upset that he trained so hard and I didn't. And I don't, like, I can't, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Like that. AB trained I, so much. I went through hell. <laughs> and I was okay with the loss, you know, but hearing shit like this. This is not a bit. Yeah. In fact, when it is a bit, he says it's not a bit. You guys remember he got all butthurt about the chair thing, which he continues to bring up. He did a 48 hour stream two weeks before the fight. First of all, that's such bullshit, bro. You can stream and train. You're not training 24 hours a day. The stream that he's talking about, I left twice during that stream to go work out. And I started That's it awesome. right after I worked out. By the way, he says you were throwing windmills. That's not true. And by the way, his form was not fucking like that amazing. <laughs> Dude, we both looked like shit. I mean, like, I'm just straight it up. Like, just, we both, it, yeah. it happens. But we, yeah, we both looked. I wasn't used to dealing with a fighter like him. And he has a weird style as well. We both <laughs> looked like ass. I mean, 
It's a YouTube boxing match. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that serious. I think he could have been better if he had trained as hard as I did. To be honest, I think I trained a lot more than him, too. I think he started the last few months while I was doing it long term because he was traveling and stuff. But yeah, whatever. This claim that you didn't train is so stupid, bro. It's just, it's insulting. It's, it's lame. It's insulting, yeah, to a lot of people. Yeah. You, you trained your ass off. Dude, I put While it... doing a full time job, which his ass doesn't have, by the way. Do not train twice a day every single day like I did. Bro, you're not Floyd Mayweather. You're a washed up YouTuber. Why is he doing this? I don't know. I That's don't what's so crazy why. to me. Well, he, I, well he's so salty about what you want that's why i was able to take headshots for hours because that's what i trained for didn't look like it buddy that man was scared as shit this man trained to get headshots for hours okay i'd like to see the training how'd you prep for that this homie's punching you in the head maybe that explains why your emotions are so unregulated he did pretty well out of creator class didn't he really yeah he got a ton of new viewers yeah. he's got crazy subs dude oh, it all worked out he's so jealous of that's what this is all about i, I don't <laughs> i don't know this is <laughs> I, I didn't even know he was trying to be a streamer in my video i put out yesterday i randomly threw in the most random ass <clears throat> clip about him just to plug his twitch for no reason i just i don't know this is all so fucking bizarre to me do you think possibly dad that your personality has anything to do with the reason why okay so maybe i'm being too mean but i mean what is this he's just entitled for people to watch him stream just why like you have to at least do something that people want to watch but know? even before the fight Every comment that was in support of me, he was responding to. These people had one like, if even, and he's responding saying, oh, you'll see, you'll see, like, and just, I don't know, he's very defensive. Bro, he's the one that comes to the weigh-in with a picture of A.B.'s grave on his underwear. Like, yeah, he's that's the, what I'm that's talking about. That's another thing, it's yeah, like... he has merch with my gravestone on it. Like, why, <laughs> why do you get to dictate what's a bit and what's not a bit? Yeah. Like, I don't understand that. I mean, it's also <sighs> just the way the, act, the full actual H3 crew rea reacted. They were like incredibly mean to me. Grow up, bro. It's like, dude, grow up. We imme I immediately retracted it. We need to play baby time for dad. Dad actually turned out to be the kid. Baby Barnett. They were just ignorantly rude and horrible just because I won. It wasn't that serious. I saw he was upset, so I was mm -hmm. like, I want to make it clear that dad is family. We like dad. Yeah. We love dad. That being said, we do love Dad. I want to emphasize that all the, we had a, a little bit of a silly rivalry. And maybe during the members live, I was just like getting a little bit lost in the sauce. You're juiced up for your boy. Yeah. That's understandable. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, you know, Dad is not only a good guy, he's a friend of the show and a fan. And a and, hell of an uh, athlete. You got to give it to him. By the way, Dad, I wanted him to call in, but he's traveling. But I'll tell you, now that the fa family's gone, I'm definitely going to be rooting for Dad in the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't. We this don't, house doesn't don't, need to stand divided anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're, I'm gonna root for Dad for sure. Dad is a class act. You know, not everyone checked on their opponent. Dad came and like was continuously checking on me. Like, hey, yeah, that's good. Hold, yeah, holding my hand. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And by the way, we were again. We got kind of lost in the sauce, and we were talking about how it was kind of maybe dirty because he like rapped and was punching you in the <laughs> yeah. ribs a bunch of times. Yeah, I mean, a lot. Yeah, I saw a lot of people saying that. Do you I, think that was dirty? I don't know. I guess it's a, I think it's okay. Yeah, no, I think that's normal. <laughs> I want to clarify now for everybody that dad is not a dirty fighter. He's no, a warrior. No, no. Yeah, no. And he he's won a mad man. Square. I don't know what he wants me to do beyond. I don't know what more he wants. They never invited me on the show. Ethan just kept always saying, oh, we got to get dad to call in. Okay. First of all, you are not entitled to be on my show. You can come on the show if I want you to come on the show. That being said, we did invite you on the show. And he said no. And he's been on the show previously. He's like, been on, he's been on this show times. multiple times. He was still traveling. So he said, Dad, call in. He was meant to call in. And then he sent AB a text saying, you know what? I don't think I want to call in. I guess because he's so upset. Why would you say I didn't invite you, bro? And again, not that I owe you that anyway. After the first chair thing that went kind of sideways, I was like, okay, he's obviously sensitive and stuff, so I'm just gonna be straight, I'm not gonna do any shtick and stuff. There was supposed to be a chair bit that he straight up purposefully ruined. Bro, about the fucking chair again! I don't even know <laughs> how to talk about the chair thing. It's so cr it's so crazy to me. What was the bit in his mind, do you think? It all started with Hassan going on Super Mega's podcast, right? And they gave him a tiny chair, and mm -hmm. it was funny. And then Ethan... As a joke, they sent Ethan a tiny chair. 
And this was all super mega Hassan H3 thing, right? And then dad decides, oh, I wanna be part of this. I'm gonna also send you a chair and this is gonna be the greatest chair ever, right? The bit was that they sent this crappy chair, Ethan acted all offended and destroyed it or, or shat on it or whatever, Hold the right? phone though. He sent us a bunch of random crap from Amazon, right. unassembled. I'm gonna send it. Which it's fine, just, and we just, said we were gonna assemble it, Yeah, and we that's said fine. we would assemble it, I wanna, I wanna say that. Do we have the what, the leftovers of that chair? Because the, the ingredients so. included to make this chair was like duct tape, comically rubber human feet, like a torn apart chair. I mean, this thing was objectively like dog shit. It was right, all, and that's, it was what I, like, that's why I'm lost. Like, wasn't the bit that you sent us a crappy chair too? Like. I think there were like memes on his channel, and that's what made it confusing. Like the duct tape, I guess, is a meme on his channel. It's shit that we didn't understand, so it just looked like. Still a not shit. nice about that. It's not nice. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it's saying. not. It's not like he sent me like a a G, a G Force ten thousand gamer chair, and I like burned it. This is what he sent me, you guys. This right. is what he sent me that was so nice. That I was that I was supposed to have reverence and love for. So who didn't get the bit here, us or or dad? My intention with that was to set him up for like a nice little riff tiff for tat. Like I was gonna cloud him up. We were having like this whole chair feud. I did a whole segment on the show about it for him. Right. I didn't ask him to send me a fucking chair. You know what I mean? He just like, hey yo, include me in your show. And I'm like, okay, cool, let's do it. What am I as an entertainer supposed to make of this chair? He sent us all these separate fucking things from like an Amazon order and expected us to know how to build this for him? Yeah, the bit didn't really it. make sense. I think we got a little confused. Actually, if you go back even to the episode, we're a little confused about what's going on. After the fact, he then did a live stream where he said a bunch of stuff talking bad. And then you reached out to him, I believe, Ethan. I believe you guys talked about it. And he's like, oh, I didn't know it was going to go that way. But I guess now, yeah, I, we could just play it up. I want to play it up like I'm the sad Oh, loser. yeah. He told me it was a bit. Yeah. I was like, bro, are you seriously upset about this? Like, and and it, he's like, no, it's just a bit. But they... I was just doing a bit where, but people took it the wrong way and they ruined it. But exactly. he's actually not doing a bit then or now. Also, before we went on this live here today, I, re I once again wanted to reach out to him uh, personally to ask him what's the deal. And he unfollowed me on Twitter. And, you know, again, like both times I tried to work it out with him behind the scenes. This time, too, he just unfollowed me, which means I can't message him. The joke was dad was trying to be nice because eight mega 64 was mean to that's them, was mean to Ethan. I'm trying to send a funny, innocent, kind gesture sending this chair. He twisted it to, to make it so that he could start hating on me. And it made no sense. It was the dumbest bit ever because there was no reason for us to be feuding. And that was the beginning of a disastrous <laughs> back and forth between <laughs> H3. And there was, was no back and forth. I mean, it was just you being a dick. And me trying to calm things behind the scenes, you know? So after Ethan made his response stream, Dad addressed it on Twitter when he said, I talked to AB. Sorry, dude. I talked to AB and apologized for talking about his training. I never intended to be rude or hurt his feelings. It's been real hard for me dealing with some interactions and things being said about me throughout this experience. Hurtful, real-life comments. I have to speak up and defend myself a little. That being said, none of that has to do with AB, and I'm sorry to him. So based on that tweet, obviously water under the bridge for AB versus Dad, but for Dad's beef with Ethan in particular, he decided to make a more in-depth response on his YouTube channel. He tweeted out with the caption, How I feel. It's all done. We're all good. Last year, before AB and I were even publicly announced as opponents, uh, there was a bit that the crew agreed on with me, and uh, Ethan turned it into me clout chasing and said stuff that felt very real life, like I, Nathan Barnett, was just trying to be a part of the show and that wasn't the bit at all and i was like what what's happening here and it felt to me like i got sideswiped and i felt like pretty hurt and surprised by it because i was like okay i guess this is the bit now and uh ab even texted me after that show and said sorry the bit didn't go as planned i was like okay yeah so i just kind of rolled with it and i was like i guess this is it now dad's the enemy and no one understands why but i had to be this enemy. So it was it was just surprising. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is it was surprising for me uh, that that happened. And I was like, OK, I don't really get this. And there was like bad communication or no communication at all between me and Ethan. And that's sort of what started everything and started adding and piling on to how I now feel. 
But it's, this thing is just such a piece of shit. I can't troubleshoot your. Fucking your... sucks. Dude. I know. I'm not gonna troubleshoot God your. God damn it! Come dad. on, guys. He's he's trying. Shut the fuck oh, up. Oh fuck baby. him, dude. Is it's he? It's such a guys. slap in the fucking face with this guy. He's not trying. Yeah. He, how he is he trying? trying? Guys, come on. I'm not gonna troubleshoot his oh, chair dude. live. He's my fellow Crater Clash veteran. Let's 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 show some love. For what? Love for Hell what love. exactly? What are we showing love Effort? for? The fuck you? The Since when shit. do we show love for effort? Oh, fuck. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, shit. Fuck. oh fuck. <laughs> oh, come on. What? Ah. You put a lot of work into that. Throw it in the fucking trash. <laughs> Get that shit out of here, man. All right, well, I mean, it's not very stable. I will say, when he said he's going to build you the throne you deserved after uh, was Super Mega dropped off, this is not what I imagined whatsoever. Are you I, criticizing Dad? I'm, I'm some okay. friendly criticism. I hope you enjoy the chair. Wow, even Speaker's really tinny. Sounds like a fucking fun. Tooth Tunes toothbrush. Yeah, man. it sounds like a yak back from the fucking nineties. <laughs> Is it just a song? I know my song, dude. Yeah, never heard that one before, Dad. <laughs> You gotta dance in the chair to test no. the stability. <laughs> oh! Alright. You gonna smash it? Oh boy, here we go. Watch out for- <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about your chair, Dad? Just wanna point out, that is the newest desk we have in the office. Alright. Get <laughs> <laughs> you the fucking chair, idiot! <laughs> sure. I sure, I'll, I'll throw that out for you. Thanks for the trash. I don't know, I see that as an insult, making it that trashy. Total fucking insult. It's not, he, he's making fun of me. Yeah, yeah, he is. It's clearly trying to insult you. Tooth Tunes fucking toothbrush speaker, man. It's fucked up. He, he gave me some joke-ass chair, and that's how I treated it. Disrespectful. I'll tell you what, we put his face on the wall so the security doesn't let him in next time. It says, <laughs> Ethan went too far. Shut up. He said, this is war, Ethan, in all caps. Uh-oh. Shut up, bitch! You are too mean. You went too far. <laughs> <laughs> poor dad. Cry about it. You should have made me no, a better chair, dad. bro. Oh, poor dad. All right, let's move on. Rich Thank dad, you, dad. dad. Uh, maybe if you want to try again and make a better chair, it doesn't suck. I'll try it again, but... Throughout this whole thing, the jokes Ethan has been making feel um, like real-life digs on me. And it's just hard for me on, on my end, just being slammed all day, saying real life stuff about my actual career, my personal life. I'm uh, talking as dad bot and I'm saying I'm going to dig AB's grave and I have the quantum fist and I am in another dimension and I'm programmed to obliterate. This is the trash talking I'm doing. But like when he had Anthony Fantano on the show, he's saying stuff like dad has dead girlfriend energy and he's referencing Siobhan, my girlfriend who, who, who did pass away. I would not want to fuck with dad. Knowing his background, you can't keep up with that speed. He's a dancer. And yeah, also he's, he's going to have little crazy. stamina. Yeah. And he's, and definitely, he's definitely he's got, got a screw loose. Yeah. Yeah. Like he came on our show to promote uh, his fight against Matt and he was just like, he's, he's an like, animal. my life is a tragedy. I'm fighting for my dead girlfriend. I was like, mm. whoa, dude, I don't want to fuck. I don't fuck with Yeah, you don't, want a, you don't want a dead girlfriend punch. No. no nobody wants a dead no, girlfriend no, punch to the no. face. No, but I would pity anyone who gets in the ring with him, dude. I was like, this is the joke? You're saying I have dead girlfriend energy? And he just kept saying it the way he said it. It was just throwing it out there. It was, it was very casual the way he was saying it. And I felt it was kind of insensitive because like, imagine this was Flip and I said something and something like this happened to him. And I said anything, like I would get torn apart on the internet. But like, it's just throwing it away like that, saying dead, calling her a dead girlfriend. And it was just, it was really sad to me. Added to the, the overall feelings I'm now feeling regarding this whole interaction. But I got over it, moved past it, and now it's just coming back up. So all that stuff that was said last year is still in my head. So when I look, walk away from all of this, this whole interaction, it's like uh, nothing good happened for me. This was just misery for me the whole way through. The last thing is the night of the fight and there, the crew's reaction was super sad to me, super disheartening because they were saying really hard, harsh things about me, saying I'm a dirty fighter. Oh. Dad is already slowing down. Yeah. Dude, dad doesn't have shit in a real fight. Oh, dude. Dad. That is days, oh. Why the dude, fuck I they think... do that overhead bullshit? That's yeah, the first so shot. annoying. I know. Dad is Ten slow seconds. though. Dad, yeah, is, dad slow. is slow. He looks mad. Ooh. He looks tired. He's red. Ooh. 
He has a fucking cry, bro. Dad, you ain't got shit, bro. It's you, like we were saying. He didn't, like, last year, like, really didn't count. Like, no. That wasn't a fight. What? No, what he happened? AB resigned. AB threw in the towel. Yeah, he's oh, not no. okay. No. I don't know what happened. What? Where Dad, or what? don't even smile right now. Yeah, what the fuck? Oh, oh my God. No. Wait, what happened? Oh, there no, he's in yes, a lot he's of pain. pain. Wait, he so broke he his arm. I'm Dude, not. fuck shut you, fuck bro. Fuck off, Dad. Just, just chill. Just shut the fuck up. You lost, bitch. You got your ass kicked. Have some class, dude. Well, I'd like to just know what's going on with AB. I really yeah, don't no, fucking I care about okay. that. Shut up, Dad. Keep his name out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. All right. All right. All right. No, fine. Yeah, you, I'll congratulate. You did fine. You did fine. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Like, seriously, what the fuck? I texted. Him. Someone should check Dad's him? gloves. <laughs> yeah. Check his gloves. Yeah, bro. It's for real, bro. Well, you got oh a little rocks God. in there? What the fuck? Seriously. There's a weights and fish <laughs> moment. People are saying weights and fish. Yo, check the gloves. Check the gloves. There weights and go. gloves. Weights, weights and, and fish. <laughs> Dad wouldn't do anything like that. Come on. That's what he's counting on you thinking that. <laughs> bro, again, he hasn't had a proper fight. His yeah, ego is really yeah. juiced uh, up again. now. Again. <laughs> like, you have fought. Your career is 50 seconds. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Now it's I'm, like the curse of dad. Baffled, dude. Doing dude, dad, or AB was fucking him up. I know. Why didn't they ever I'm show hoping, a replay? I'm hoping whenever. Yeah, I'm sure, they're I'm looking for say, it. Whenever he shuts up, uh, they will hopefully. Like, I want to see that, that volley at the long. beginning. These are longer than your Jordan Peterson monologues. Right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> play the fucking music on it, Dad. Uh, Fuck uh, off, Dad. Dad, you fought for, you fought for one round. Uh, dude, dude, why he's is he fucking... still talking? Turn his yeah. mic off. <laughs> this is the dad show. Why are they letting him monologue so long? This is so, so fucking long? pathetic. Like, Give the other guy a mic. He's trying to do it like WWE. Yeah. This is his audition to yeah. fuck this guy, man. professional wrestler. <laughs> fuck you. Thing with Dirty Fighter, I still get those comments. Because they say, they say something, it sticks. If his people don't see every episode, they see that. And then they I just keep getting these comments. And now that's just out there in the world. People think I'm a dirty fighter. The crew, no one stood up for me and defended me. And I was just like hurt by everyone. And then I know the next day, Ethan 180 and said, no, no, we love dad. We love dad. But then even when he was saying that, he had to end his sentence with another dig. And he said, let's get dad to, to call in on the show. He's got nothing to do, right? Huh? And he laughed and said it again. He's like, he's got nothing going on. But the thing about dad is like, he has nothing. This is all he has in life. He'll die for this. Oh, and then, you know, it was pissing me off because AB's like injured and we were all scared. And then the camera's just following dad for like 20 minutes. We're like, enough dad. I love you, but. AB's like dying in the corner. I just want to see what the fuck's going on. <laughs> and here's more just dad propaganda. You're right, AB. Dad is fully committed. I'll tell you, that guy doesn't have shit to do. He is fucking nothing in his going on except this fight. You know what I mean? But we love him. <laughs> it's like, dude, what the heck, man? Like, I started to think, like, does this guy really just not like me and, like, truly think I'm a loser? <laughs> so I, don't, I, don't, I just don't know why... He had to end it like that. I am totally done. I know they are done. I have no ill feelings to anyone. Never did. I don't ever argue. I don't even get. I don't, I don't feel I have enemies. And I apologize to anyone on the crew uh, if I've done or said anything that's made anyone feel bad. This is a really weird world for me to be in, do, making a video like this. I, I apologize for everything. It's truly over. It's what I, I will chalk it up to a, a horrible case of miscommunication. And let's just get it over with. Thank you uh, for listening. So that's the entire story surrounding this Nathan Barnett versus Ethan Klein beef. Ethan's comments during the Anthony Fantano podcast were really insensitive and I can't defend it in any way. And if Ethan hasn't apologized to Nathan for that, he definitely should. But I'm going to be real, every other complaint that Nathan had... I don't really fully understand. As someone who just looked through all of the H3 podcast episodes that Nathan was referencing for why Ethan is being a dick to him, I really can't get behind his reasoning and I do think he's being oversensitive. In the heat of the moment, Ethan reacted to his friend AB getting hurt at Creator Clash by someone
somewhat jokingly saying that dad was being a dirty fighter or something nefarious was happening on the side of dad. And then afterwards on his public podcast two days later, he clarified that dad is not a dirty fighter and anybody who's saying that is wrong. That really should be the end of it. Objectively, more people are going to see the public podcast than the live reaction that's behind a $5 paywall. And if you're that big of a fan to be an H3 member and watch the members only live stream, you're probably also going to be watching the public live stream. So to say that everyone still thinks he's a dirty fighter and Ethan didn't do his due diligence to correct that is just wrong. I also think dad dissing AB's training just because he got more Twitch followers than him after the fight is completely ridiculous. He already apologized for that, but I do want to stress that the reason dad's streams probably don't get the views that he's hoping for is because his stream isn't really promoted anywhere. I've known of Nathan Barnett for a while now because of Creator Clash, and I didn't even know he did Twitch streams. It's not linked on his YouTube anywhere. I never see him tweet about it, and the only way to find out he does Twitch streams is to manually search it on Google or click this weird looking link on his Twitter bio and find it in a sea of links to all of his other socials. Meanwhile, AB is always tweeting out his streams and letting people know that he's live, so of course he's gonna get more viewers. And then finally, the chair thing. What even was that? Why is he even mad at that? The chair was objectively shit, and he made a joke out of it. It was a bit mean-spirited, but hey, that's what you're all about, right? Fake beefs? I have no idea. But I would love to hear what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Do you think Ethan was more of the asshole? Do you think dad's being oversensitive? Do you think he has the right to be this upset? Again, I think he has the right to be upset over the dead girlfriend comments. That was way over the line. But everything else, I just think is a little bit of an overreaction. But that's just my opinion, and I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below. If you want to keep up to date with drama like this, be sure to subscribe with notifications on, and check out the end card to see if there's any drama you might have missed. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in another video.